Please remain standing for the reading of the gospel. I read to you from Luke 15, verses 1 through 10. Luke 15, verses 1 through 10. Tax collectors and other notorious sinners often came to listen to Jesus teach. This made the Pharisees and teachers of religious law complain that he was associating with such sinful people, even eating with them. So Jesus told them this story. If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them gets lost, what will we do? Won't he leave the 99 others in the wilderness and go to search for the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he will joyfully carry it home on his shoulders. And when he arrives, he will call together his friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, because I have found my lost sheep. In the same way, there is more joy in heaven over one lost sinner who repents and returns to God than over 99 others who are righteous and haven't strayed away. This is the gospel of Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends, in your youth, I don't know if you can go back into those years, But in your youth, did you have those knock-knock jokes? You had them. So I'm going to ask you, knock-knock. Luke. Look through the peephole and find out. (laughs) That's what we're going to do today. We're going to look through the peephole, look at this text, and see what it means for us today. When we look through the peephole at Psalm 14, we see the Psalms asking some very tough questions. Is there anyone out there who understands the fullness of the Word of God? Is there anybody? Is there anyone actively seeking God? Jeremiah tells of God's invitation to return, but should people not heed, the land will be ruined. We hear these words. We hear these words. Return to God. Make straight your paths. In the light of this invitation, we look through the people and see God's way to work with the lost. We need to understand the context here. In order to understand the approach of Jesus, we have to remember what was happening at the time. The tax collectors and sinners were all gathering to hear Jesus. The Pharisees, those who were right with the law, those who were trying to do everything right, and the teachers of the law were watching and muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Can you imagine that? Jesus says to the Pharisees, suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. What would you do? Now, you need to think about that for yourselves. Of course, if you look at it statistically, losing only one sheep is not bad. It would be important to see that the 99 are cared for. That's what we would be thinking. It's important that those 99, if we run away to be with that lost sheep, what is going to happen to the 99? So we remember when the shepherd came back. If any of his sheep were lost, he had to bring the bones back with him because he had to show his owner that he hadn't taken that sheep. So now we have a lost sheep. What would we think the Pharisees would want to do? They would want to hold on and tighten the law. Tighten the law so that there's no more sheep that would be lost. And see that they work with those 99. And then Jesus comes in. 
Jesus comes in and says, if there's one lost, I will leave the 99. Now, does that make sense? Statistically, it doesn't make sense because you should be caring for those 99. But what Jesus knows that we don't know is that Jesus is saying, these sheep have been taught by the shepherd. They're not going to go wrong. They are not going to do those other things because they know what is important. And so they're going to live out and do those special things that Jesus, the shepherd, had taught them. So Jesus knows he has the freedom to leave and take care of the lost. But too many times in the church, we tend to hold on to the Pharisees' belief that if we just hold on to the 99 that are with us, we're going to be okay. We'll be safe. And Jesus is saying to us, go out. Go out and be with the lost. So there are times to focus on the lost. And we have to ask ourselves the question, who are the lost today in our community? Could it be those who practice gender violence? Could it be those who oppress and tread on the poor and maintain their poorness for their own expense? Why are the poor getting poorer and the rich getting richer? Are those who practice echo nightmares in the community, such as produce smoke in the air, and those who put trash plastics into the ocean, are they the lost? What about those men teaching youth that taverns are the places to hang out? Are they the lost? What are we saying to children who are used as prostitutes? Where is the church? And where are we claiming things that need to be changed? In 1 Timothy 1, 12 to 17, we see that even the worst of sinners are given grace by God to be restored. So even those who repulse us are given grace to be restored. Can we be a part of that? So what do we do? This is the 16th Sunday in Pentecost, the time in which the Spirit moves and gets us out there. What do we need to do to see that the lost can come home? And sometimes even we need to recognize that we are the lost. I f just finished the sermon, and I was called out to see a friend of mine who was dying in um, Thunder Bay. And they gave me instructions, but left one part of the instruction out. So I kept on getting lost. You know, it took me half an hour to go and ask somebody. I stayed in my lostness because I thought I could figure it out myself. How often do we do that? How often do we do that? We see Jesus knowing the people who believe, who worship, they are growing in prayer. They have opportunities to keep the word alive and study alive. They are single-minded on their focus on God's will. They know what it means to surrender to God's will. They are encouraged in a biblical community. This is a shepherd who has taught them they are promised spiritual gifts, and they look out for them and learn what their gifts are. They give of themselves generously and give of their resources and share of their power in their faith. Jesus knew he could leave them as unity was there. And he knew that he could go out and seek that lost one. As we are all ministers of the gospel, you and me are called to leave what gives us comfort and go and bring home the lost. If at least 90 people take this call seriously, 
there would be at least 90 invitations going out to the lost. They would be invited to return again, and once they've returned, they too can bring others home. We are about bringing others home. Can we dare ask if there are places that we are lost today? Can we dare ask Jesus to give his full attention to those who feel lost today? There are times in the midst of some horrible things that happen in the land that I too feel lost. I want to hold on to my faith and see that for Israel, Israel means the people struggling with God. I want to struggle with God to make sure that the people can come back again. But sometimes I too feel bewildered by the pain in the community. Let us listen to what Paul calls, um, says to the Ephesian church. If we are to do as Jesus suggests in his parable, we are called to be strong in the Lord and in his power. Paul says to the Ephesians, put on the full armor of God. Not only a little bit of God, the full armor of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's succeeding schemes in our society today. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of the dark world, and against spiritual forces, forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. So when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm, then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet filled with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. Faith brings meaning to people. If life is senseless and there are struggles that are so unfair that life just doesn't make sense anymore, we need to go out and take to those people the flaming arrows where those flaming arrows of the evil one are, we need to see that they are extinguished. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit with all the kinds of prayers and requests that the Spirit gives to us. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the saints. This loving path will hold the truth of Jesus Christ to the lost. And we will be able to carry them home. So, knock, knock. Jesus. Jesus, the one who is carrying you this day, the one who wants you to flourish and be there for the lost, to claim their rightful place in Christ's home. We peep into Luke as invited to us, to go into the world and listen. The peep into Luke has invited us to go into the world and speak. Are you excited about your journey? You have your armor. You have the God who has given you the belt of truth. We are out there. We harvest, our harvest is great. But the workers are few. We need the shepherd to move through this place. I tell you the truth. It will make a difference indeed. Join us. Amen. Amen. Loving Lord Jesus, lead us, heavenly Jesus. Lead us. Lead us into the places where our people are lost. Lead us and free us to do your will that we may reach out to the lost, 
and help them to find everlasting love, now and always. Amen.